Hey everyone, welcome back to the Marisol Nichols podcast. And also to our newcomers, welcome and thank you for checking it out. Um, I wanted to do this particular podcast just sort of a one-on-one and kind of like a, a recap and just sort of talk to you guys, truly. Um, first, I want to thank everyone for, for tuning in and all the reviews that you've been giving are amazing. Um, and I want to thank you for your support. We are going to continue to share stories and ways to combat human trafficking, ways to keep you and your family safe and your loved ones and all of that. But um, we're also going to touch on broader subjects such as, you know, what it's like being a female growing up in this world today. Well, all of the rampant stuff going on there. So anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Um, I also want to thank you guys for the wonderful reviews. They've been, you know, truly, truly humbling. And I, I really appreciate them. Um, some of them I wanted to highlight, like I, I've really noticed a lot of them saying that they had no idea this was happening. And why that touches me is because that's my mission. I, I'm trying to raise awareness about this and reach those people that would normally never know that something like this is going on. You know, I, I've said this before in different episodes, but I need... <laughs> Basically, all the bad guys know what's happening, and I need the good guys, people like you, uh, learning what's happening, because if good people don't know about this, nothing will be done about it. So I, I really appreciate um, those comments and those of you that are coming back and learning more. I, I, I truly, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. Um, and also, there's been a lot of comments about how you feel the show has allowed some of you to talk about you know, any sort of sexual abuse that you may have encountered without any shame. And I wanted to let you all know, like, you know, I talked about what happened to me as, you know, since I was five years old and then what again happened as a teenager and all of those things. And if you haven't heard that episode, um, I believe it's episode two with Carrie Kasem, a good friend of mine. And that's where I sort of spilled the beans on everything that happened. But I did that for a particular reason. I did that because... I wanted people to be able to talk about what happened and not feel like it defines who you are. I don't, I didn't do it because I, I didn't want to be like another victim or like, oh, look at what happened to me. That's not the point. The point is, hey, look at what happened to me and I got it. Now, here's what I'm going to do about that. Here's my choice on how I handle that. And I wanted to sort of remind people that you have a choice. And just because some complete does something horrific to you or takes advantage of you at a vulnerable moment, whether you're young or in a situation where you don't feel you can fight back, because they do that, it doesn't define you. And you choose how you're going to deal with that. And if it just occurred to me, and I think I've talked about this before, but it was like, if I let that define me or ruin my life or make me smaller or more vulnerable, they've won. And I, I don't like people winning over me. So I've said this before that, which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I chose to make it make me stronger. And so for those of you out there that have experienced these things, I want you to know I hear you. I know exactly how you feel. And don't let those guys win. Okay. So thank you for all of those that have left comments on that situation. And I, I, I hope you've felt some comfort. Um, continuing on, you know, what have we learned so far? I've got some notes here. I wanted to make sure that we get to everything that I wanted to say. So what have we learned this season? And this season's not over. I wanted to let you know, but I just want to kind of do a recap, right? So some of the things that we have talked about is how these sting operations go down. You know, we, we've given a bit of behind the scenes and we're going to be showing you more of this behind the scenes on, on different stings that I've done or different stings that my guests have done um, in future episodes. And I mean some incredible operations. We're just waiting for the all clear um, so that we can spill the beans on them. They've already been recorded, but we sort of have to hold them because some of these cases are still pending. So once we get the all clear, we'll be releasing those. And I'm telling you, your mind is going to be blown. So stay tuned, please. Um, 
We've also learned about the dangers online. Truly. I mean, it just, it seems like every day we're hearing stories of what is happening out there. And I also hope that as you've become more aware, um, you're hearing stories as well. Like you're seeing how prevalent this is. That's what usually what I've encountered is after I've talked to someone, whether one-on-one -on -one or in an event about this, all of a sudden they start seeing this everywhere. And I, I, I'm assuming the same thing is happening for you guys that sort of like, once your eyes are open to this, it's kind of hard to shut them again. Um, and which is what I'm trying to create. I'm trying to create an army, you know, so that this changes, so that this stops, you know, within our lifetime, so that this becomes something in the history books. So anyway, um, the dangers online, I, I really hope you all have learned on different ways to protect yourself. And we're going to be covering this a lot, a lot more. We have an episode coming up that is honestly jaw dropping, jaw dropping. So stay tuned for that. Um, and we've also learned how predators and traffickers identify targets, whether online or in events. Um, and that brings me to a story that I, I really wanted to talk about. You know, I don't know if you guys heard this and you can Google this, but a 15 year old girl in Texas was taken and kidnapped uh, from a Dallas Mavericks game on April 8th of this year. Essentially, she, she, it was halftime. She was with her dad. She was with her dad at this game, right? Giant event, huge stadium event, right? And she just went to the bathroom and she never came back. First of all, you know, that alone as a parent, like that's your worst nightmare. But I'm, I'm highlighting this story because I, I'm not trying to be a fear monger and I'm not trying to make parents scared of every single thing, but I also really want our listeners to learn that you really can't be too careful. Like you can still like, go out, please have fun, go to events, go, go do things, live your life, but be aware, be aware of what can happen so that you can keep yourself safe. So this 15 year old girl went to the bathroom and she never returned. And her father reported her missing saying, Hey, she left her phone on her seat. Right. But apparently, um, the police didn't open an investigation at that time because they have a policy to report teenagers as runaways, which I understand. I, I really do. It's just, it's a problem. Right? So they didn't open an investigation at the time. And according to the police, she was seen in a surveillance video walking out of the arena with an unidentified man. That was April 8th. Then on April 11th, just a few days later, the police added an endangered flag. So like an endangered label to the report, right? And sent out a bulletin. And at this point, she was still listed as a runaway and the police didn't see signs of a kidnapping or abduction. So then after six days, the parents finally contacted the Texas counter trafficking initiative, and they contacted the national center for missing and exploited children, which by the way, we are going to have a, a guest from that organization. If you want to know more, they're called miss, just go on missingkids.org. They are a phenomenal organization. I've been dying to have them on. So please look out for that because that is going to be an incredible episode. They literally specialize and that's all they do on missing kids. So if you ever have a situation out there where your child goes missing, you contact them immediately. So I'll recap. So after six days, the parents contacted the Texas counter trafficking initiative who got in touch with missingkids.org or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Within a very short period, the group found nude photos online of this 15 year old girl on a website being sold for sex. And they notified the police in Oklahoma city where she was believed to be held at that time. So let's look at this. So this 15 year old girl ugh, goes to the bathroom. She's taken. Sorry just gets to me. 
you know, no matter how many times I do this and no matter how much I talk about it, it just gets to me. So she's taken, she is stripped down naked. Nude photos of her are posted on the on these websites and gone and ads are placed. Come have sex with this little girl. It's unreal. And she's being held in an Oklahoma city uh -huh, hotel. So that information gets to the Oklahoma city police. They make three arrests, but they don't find the girl. Then an anonymous tip, and God bless that person who gave an anonymous tip. Police found her three days later. And she was walking with another person six miles from the hotel. And thankfully, she is now safely back with her family. Now, essentially, it's horrific, but... I believe I'm just looking it up right now. I want to make sure I get the number right. Yep. Eight, eight individuals were arrested in conjunction with this eight. It took eight adults, by the way, and one, two, three, four, five, six of them were females. Six of them to force a 15 year old girl hold her against her will, and force her to have sex with strangers. The thing that always gets me in this is when there's female traffickers. I don't know why, but it gets me a thousand times worse. Because I'm like, you're, you're exploiting your own group. You're a woman. Like... How can you do this to your own? I don't understand it. And it always just kills me when I see the female traffickers. Just, not that I expect men to do this, but with men you go, okay, maybe you don't know what it's like to, pardon my French, but have a vagina, you know? And have someone forcefully do stuff to your body. But women do. Girls do. How the hell can you do this to your own kind? I don't understand that. And I, and I apologize if this is too much for you guys. Um, I, I really do apologize. It's just... It just gets me. So, thank God that girl is now safely back with her family. So, in regards to all of this, there's been several... Several... <laughs> articles circulating about whether the police should have or could have done more. And we're going to answer that question. We're actually going to hear from Lieutenant Mark Evans. Um, he's been on my podcast before. He's also on my board of directors for Slavery Free World. And he is a human trafficking expert who travels around the country educating police departments on what trafficking is and what to look for. Um, he's a phenomenal resource and he's going to get into this on what resources the police need or could use, um, et cetera. So tune into that episode, um, with Lieutenant Mark Evans. So what's the takeaway from this, right? Well, one of the things is it's very important to share the resources, right? In other words, in this case of the Dallas Mavericks stadium abduction, right? Um, the recommendation, whoever recommended to that family that they reach out to the Texas Counter Trafficking Initiative, that was key in finding the victim. Like reaching out to organizations that specialize in tracking down missing children. So again, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, look them up, missingkids.org. We're gonna have them on the show. Um, it, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal resource. Um, and we've mentioned it before, you know, you kind of have to have those really difficult conversations with your kids and with each other, you know, review resources online, be prepared for something like this. And, you know, I, I always say traffickers are looking for signs of vulnerability. They're looking for vulnerable kids. So that 15 year old girl alone by herself with no parental supervision, 
some of the things that they do, you go, okay, wait, I don't understand. How could that girl walk out with another adult and no one could see her being forced? I always tell my kid this, right? So the really smart traffickers, they keep in mind they have access to your kid online or yourself if you're a teenager listening to this, to your Facebook, to your Twitter, to your Instagram, right? If they want to find out more about, hey, where do you live? Oh, you've posted a picture of you in front of your school or you in front of a car or you in front of your house. Great. Google. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, okay. That's where they live. That's who her parents are. All they have to do is literally screenshot pictures of the kid's house. And then you tell the kid, oh, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to kill your family. I'm going to hurt your brother. I'm going to hurt your little sister. I'm going to hurt your mom or hurt your dad. And that's how they can force these kids to go with them in an open public area, what looks like willingly, but it's not. And so I've had these conversations with my daughter. I said, if anyone says that they're going to hurt me and are telling you to do something, don't believe them. Do you believe them? She's like, no. I'm like, absolutely not. And that's how they do it. So please, please, please be aware of what you are posting online or what your kids are posting online on social media that can be accessed by anyone, including the bad guys. I hate, I hate that. I hate that, that I have to tell people this. I hate that you can't just post what you want and you have to think about things, but you do because unfortunately that's the world we live in. You know, and I always say this to my kid. I say, look, you have to remember most people out there are good. Truly, truly, most people out there are good. And it's only a small percentage of people that are bad that are doing this. But you have to protect yourself from that small percentage to be safe. You know, and another thing that I would tell my kid, particularly when she was younger, and for those of you with young kids or little sisters, little brothers, it's easy to get lost when you're like, you know, only yay high and everyone around you is huge. Like keep in mind like when you're a kid, if you remember this, like everything is huge because this world is made for adults. It's not made for kids. It's made for adults. So to a kid, an adult is a giant, right? So it's very easy to get lost in a mall or a museum or an amusement park. So I always told my kid, if you get lost, find a mom with kids, not an adult, a mom with kids. Because that mom with kids will know what to do. Go up to that mom with kids and say, I'm lost. Can you help me find my parents? And that mom will know what to do. Or a dad with kids. But you get what I mean? A family person who knows what to do. I also made my kid memorize my phone number and memorize our address. Memorize it. Always. I would just drill it. What's my phone number? Da 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 da. Good. Where do we live? Da 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 da. You know, parents, you have to do that with your kids. And I know these are hard conversations to have. You can make it fun. What's my phone number? You can make it light, you know, but you have to, you have to have those conversations. I so wish we didn't, but we do. Um, and we'll be giving you more information on that as well. Um, as you previously mentioned in a in an earlier episode, if you on your profile or on your things that you're posting yourself indicate that you're aware of human trafficking, even if it's just a half tag, stay safe, end trafficking, something like that, that will dissuade traffickers. That absolutely will dissuade. They're like, oh, I'm not going to go and, and try to target that kid. That kid knows or that parent knows or whatever. It's a good thing to put in your bio or things like that. It just will dissuade them, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or whatever, or TikTok or Snapchat or all of these, or Discord or all of these, you know, sort of vehicles that traffickers can reach out to you or your kid. Um, and if you see something, say something. You know, we're, we're constantly giving you tips on what to look for. You know, we just had an episode, if you haven't seen it, with Nancy Rivard from Airline Ambassadors on what to look for on normal commercial flights. You know, you're flying to LA, you're flying to Orlando, you're flying to Vegas, you're flying to New York. 
literally tells you, like in that episode, we tell you what to look for. And if you see something, say something, truly. Um, also, if you run across something online, you can either call the police or more importantly, you can call the cyber tip line. Do you guys know this? There's a cyber tip line. So that if you run across something where it seems like a kid is being exploited, something, you know, inappropriate or looks dangerous, you actually can do something about it. You can report it to the cyber tip line at 1-800-THE-LOST. 1-800-THE-LOST. And please report it because those tips help, help law enforcement and the FBI and agencies find missing children. So please report something if you see it. And again, people, you know, I truly, I'm, I'm not trying to be a fear monger. I just want to keep kids safe. So I, I really do appreciate you all tuning in time and time again. And please share this. Like, please share this with your friends and with your family, you know, and let's educate and let's create an army of informed, educated people so that this never happens to you or a loved one because you knew what to look for, you knew the signs, and you knew how to kept, keep yourself and your friends and family safe. Um, also, I wanted to answer some questions from the audience. You know, on my Instagram, I did this thing called Ask Marisol, and I'm going continue, continue to do it because I kind of also want to do some late things. So um, on Ask Marisol, there were a couple questions that um, I wanted to answer. So from Sasha S., and I know who this is because she's been a fan of mine for a very long time. She says, hi, Marisol. I would like to ask you, how do you prepare before going undercover and how long is the preparation? It's a great question. Um, it depends. Usually it's, you know, it's several days of preparation because it depends on what I'm doing. First and foremost, um, in order to prepare, I need to know what we're going after. Are we trying to identify uh, someone? Are we trying to get intel? Are we trying to get the law enforcement or whoever we're working with information? Are we trying to get the person to say something? So I need them to talk and we need them to say something, you know, because we have hidden recording equipment and stuff like that. Um, are we trying to spot a kid? What are we trying to do? So it depends obviously on what we're trying to do. And I try to obviously not try. Um, I, I learn as much as I can about what our objective is for lack of a better word. And I try to memorize, you know, someone's face or something that I need to do or say, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it depends on what we're trying to do. And, um, and then it, that goes into whatever disguises I'm going to I'm going to put on or however I'm going to act or whatever character I'm going to create because it depends on the situation. What kind of person would be in that situation, you know, so that it's believable. So, um, Sasha, thanks for your question. I hope that that answers some of that. Another question that I have is from Inez V. And she says, if you chose any other profession, what would it be and why? Okay, so instead of acting, I think... Um, you know, the more I've gotten into this, I would probably, there were a couple things. Like there's the fun answer, which was totally true, which was I would have been a rock musician. I'm, I'm such a like rebel and tomboy. <laughs> um, and I love like music is my, I'm, I'm a, kind of a music snob, which sucks, but I'm very picky. Um, I love, 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 love music. And I have so many artists that I'm just you know, ridiculously in love with and in awe of and in so many different kinds of music and genre, whether it's rock and roll or punk rock or even, you know, dance music, depending, or from Europe, which is phenomenal, or even pop um, in different styles, whether it's like, you know, I don't know, old Billy Joel or old Guns N' Roses or old Green Day, who I used to watch at the Viper Room when I would pass out flyers. Um, things like that, you know, um, even Weezer was a really good friend of mine, um, because we all came from Chicago at the time, or most of us, and we all ended up in Hollywood similarly. And so I used to like flyer, <laughs> I used to flyer down Sunset Boulevard with their, um, flyers to come see them at the Viper Room. I still actually have one of their demo reels or demo tapes. Um, it was a giant scene for me and, and, you know, 
all through my like late teens and early twenties, I actually never hung out with actors. I always hung out with musicians. It was just my thing. So the fun answer is, um, you know, I'd be a rock star. Now as I'm older and I really look at answering that question of what would it be and why, um, probably something that like Amal Clooney does, which is a human rights lawyer. You know, I can't, it's hard for me to hear about injustice in the world. It really is. It's hard and not do something about it. And so, you know, the other side of me is I would probably, I probably would have become a human rights lawyer. And for those of you out there that are human rights lawyers, man, I bow down to you. I do. So thank you, uh, Agnes, for that question. And this one from Greg, <laughs> when was the last time you mowed your lawn? Uh, never. I've never mowed my lawn. I haven't really had a lawn in a while. Um, but when I did, I, I, I had a boy do it. <laughs> All right, um, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, there's going to be more discussions to come in the coming weeks. We're going to be digging into an explosive story uh, from Bloomberg about um, online grooming via the Twitch app. I want to thank you all for supporting this podcast. Thank you so much for spreading the word. We're growing and people are tuning in and people are subscribing. So thank you to all of you that are out there and spreading the word. Please remember to subscribe either on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And please visit marisolnichols.com slash podcast or my nonprofit, which is slaveryfreeworld.org. Um, please leave, continue to leave reviews, ask me questions. Uh, I'm going to do more episodes like this where it's just me sort of talking and talking about current events. Feel free to send anything. I read all the comments. Um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Marisol Nichols podcast.